Today I'm going to be sharing a technique that I've been working on and really working hard on to create a free motion quilting design or a motif that I can use with my Anita Good Design Quilt in the Hoop Blocks. When I purchased Stitch Artist, I was a little bit disappointed to find out that it didn't have an auto rotation feature. However, I was ecstatic when I found out Enthusiast did. So today, this technique will be using Enthusiast as well as Stitch Artist Level 1. Now I do have Stitch Artist Level 3, so that's why you see all the different tools, but really this can be done as simply in Stitch Artist Level 1. Let's get to making the quilt, the motif. I found a book by Eva Larkin called Free Motion Quilting Made Easy, and she uses just very basic shapes. I will be um, on my blog. I'll show you a picture of the cover of her book, but I highly recommend it if you like to quilt. It's, it's pretty interesting how she combines all of these shapes. The first thing I want to show you is that I have selected my hoop. And I need to know this for understanding how Enthusiast works. So in my hoops, I have selected the ASQ22. I renamed it earlier under Edit over here. That's my square hoop. It's the one that I'll be creating my quilting blocks in. And I've selected the hoop, apply, and OK. And I, you won't see anything happen because I'd already selected that hoop. But I need to know the width and the height of that hoop in order to use my enthusiast feature of my software. But before we move to that, I am going to create a motif that's going to be used in quilting. And for that, I'm just simply going to go to my design library in Brilliance Outlines, and I'm going to select, oh, let me see, and let's select something. I could select any of these. Let's go with the Teardrop Tube from Shapes Tube. Select OK. Now that particular shape comes onto my hoop or enters the hoop in the dead center. By dead center, it is the intersection of these perpendicular lines. Remember, this hoop is 220 by 220. Well, I want this design to rotate around the center point axis, where right now the green square is. So I'm going to have to do a bit of adjusting. The first thing I'm going to do is add stitches. It is going to become a quilting motif, so I'm going to add a run stitch right here. And it tells me several things. First and foremost, that the beginning and ending of this motif is at the bottom point. This is going to become important in about 10 seconds because this is the central point that goes to my axis around which my designs will revolve in Enthusiast. Currently, I am going to use, go to the Create menu and use my mirror. Now I'm going to use my mirror horizontally and flip it. And I'm going to drag the teardrop above my axis. Now, when I apply the carousel, the designs are going to rotate in a count, um, yeah, counterclockwise form. Okay, so they're going to go follow my arrow that way. So now my design is above the axis. In other words, the point is at the intersection of my parallel lines. And I'm going to make one more modification prior to using the carousel. For that, I want to go back. Actually, we'll stay here. Remember I said that it's going that the carousel presumes you have to know the hoop size. I am going to enlarge this motif to be approximately half the size of my hoop. So 109 to 110. With with this kind of my desire, whatever. Okay. So now this design, once again, the point, the beginning and endings, is at the center of my axis. 
and now I'm going to use the carousel feature. Let's open it up. It's under Utility Carousel and it created five designs automatically. That's the default. And we're not going to leave it there, but I want to point something out. On the carousel menu, the first two boxes that you can change are the width of the hoop. It defaults to whatever hoop size I have selected. I want my design to be the size of my hoop because that's in my Anita Good Designs, so that's exactly what I'm using is my 8 by 8 inch hoop. So it means that the entire width and height is 220 by 220. Now because it's an odd number, the access point for my designs has moved a little bit, but we're going to fix that in a second. If I invert the alternating, you see what happens with these two? And because I've got an odd number, it turns these two um, parts of my motif, it rotates them out. The part I want at the center is now at the outer aspect, and I don't want that, so I'm going to turn it back. And if you turn on Run Stitches, you'll be able to see that it moves. It still returns to the center with these motifs, but then it jumps. So Auto Rotate means that it's going to automatically adjust to whatever I have in these three boxes. This box, if I were to rotate, say, um, 12 degrees, because those are degrees around the circle, you can see what happens to the midpoint. What that's doing for this quilting motif is it creates a jump stitch from end to end, which I could fix, but I don't want this right now. So I'm going to return to zero. Rotate all, and you can see it's the entire motif rotating. I don't want that either because I want it around the central axis. Again, return to zero. What I do want is to increase the count. So I'm going to put an even number, and that creates what looks like a little flower in the center. But it's, it could be an amazing quilting motif. Now I can go, I can keep moving, I can add and add and add, and I get what looks like a spirograph. What's happened here is I'm getting a, a huge buildup of stitches, which I don't think I want. Let's just go back to, for now, eight. And say, okay. And let's jump our eyes to the object menu. I have now eight designs in this object menu. Eh, that might be okay for one thing, but what's going to happen if I start playing and adding to this particular motif? These designs are movable. Let's create one single design. So I'm going to select all of the components, design one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to go to create. I'm back in Stitch Artist. Design, Combine Designs. And now you can see that I have one design with many elements. Should have eight, yeah. Now to keep these particular elements from jumping around when I'm adjusting this to my correct size or maybe adding to it, I'm going to select all, Command A, or Control on the Mac, or Control A on a PC and I'm going to go to Edit and Group. And now everything will be moved as a group in this particular design. And that, my friends, is how you create a quilting motif. I could add more to this, but I kind of like this. I want it a little bit simple because it's going to be straight, um, I'm sorry, strip quilting. It's just going to add a little texture to my design. I hope you've learned something about combining enthusiast and stitch artist, and I hope that the enthusiast um, carousel feature is a little more clear for you today. Thanks. Until next time, thanks for joining me. Bye.